Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. My friend, meet the Holy Spirit, part five. We have really been having an extensive introduction to the Holy Spirit, and that's okay, because God does not want us to operate in ignorance, but in, to operate in full knowledge of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want us to be that person who owns a motor car, but is afraid to drive it. In fact, before I go any further with that reference, let me, let me use a section of the Bible to help us to understand. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. 2 Timothy 1 verses 6 and 7. In other words, as a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit living in you. The Holy Spirit does not empower you to be a coward in how you live as a Christian. Rather, the Holy Spirit represents power, love, and sound mind or sound thinking. The Holy Spirit inside of you is about victorious living, not for you to be defeated in this experience as a child of God. I want to say that the Holy Spirit is about controlling your life, your behavior, your speech, your thoughts in a manner that is acceptable for a child of God. Let me therefore take us to a popular reference about the Holy Spirit. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5 verses 15 to 18. I use this reference for convenience, but I'm going to give you some homework. I'm going to invite you to read from the beginning of Ephesians chapter 5, from the very first verse, because you will see some of the aspects of behavior that the writer challenges us not to practice. He calls them the fruitless deeds of darkness, which includes sexual immorality all kinds of impurity or greed, obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking. He says that those are aspects of our behavior that hinder us from experiencing the kingdom of God. Remember Romans 14 and verse 17? So what should you do instead? Be careful not to do those things which are forbidden. Always function with a consciousness that you are different. You are a child of God. Then he comes to the big point. Do not get drunk with wine which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5 verse 18. Let us use the analogy that is used here. He says, do not drink so much alcohol that makes you drunk, that impairs your reasoning and your behavior. Your speech is not normal. You cannot walk upright. Your judgment is impaired and the common behavior is debauchery. That is not a word that you hear in normal language, but by definition, we see it over and over again in scriptures, especially among people who are not born again. In simple terms, debauchery means the excessive behavior or practice of wild and immoral or ungodly behavior, mainly involving sex, drugs, alcohol, etc., Debauchery is not nice, and the writer says that when you drink alcohol to the extent that you start to behave in such an ugly way, then you are under the full control of the alcohol. So his strong instruction to the believer is to be filled with the Spirit, be controlled by the Spirit so much that you don't behave in a bad way but in a godly way. I hope you get it, because what the writer wants us to understand that you have responsibility. You have to make a conscious decision to live the way the Holy Spirit tells you to live. And always remember that the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you, he teaches you all things and he brings all things to your remembrance. Do not ignore his teaching. Do not ignore him. Do exactly what he tells you to do, and you will be on the right track. 
I want to come to the big feature of the Holy Spirit that has become controversial in, in many quarters. The last thing Jesus said to his disciples before he ascended to heaven is the following. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 1 and verse 8. Every child of God is a representative of God, and as such, we are on assignment to do the main thing that God wants us to do, to win others to become members of the family of God. This is a huge undertaking, and Jesus, in his wisdom, told those guys who were his followers, the power that you need, the superpower that you need, will not come from your ability, but from the Holy Spirit. It is a term that you hear, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Note that he says that this superpower will make you outstanding representatives wherever you go. You will be that kind of person who fearlessly, boldly, and confidently tell others about Jesus, even in the face of strong opposition. When you read the book of Acts, you see that played out in a practical way. The disciples who were Jesus' followers were men who were fearful, who had doubts they could do what Jesus wanted them to do. But their experience was that when they experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, as we see in Acts chapter 2, when God himself poured out the Holy Spirit in them in a supernatural way, they started to do big things like preaching boldly, heal the sick, stand up and defend Jesus, miracles, and so much more. In fact, the more they did that was the more they experienced what we call persecution, but they did not back down. Read that book for yourself. It is like the before and after that you see when they are advertising some products. In this case, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, your after takes on a whole new dimension and all of this is meant for you to be an effective witness or a true representative of Jesus as you carry out the mandate to win others for Jesus. So there you have it, my friend. I have sought over these last several days to give you a comprehensive introduction to Holy Spirit. He is authentic, he is awesome, and he is your friend. Get to know him and go on to have a victorious life as a Christian.